I am going to be using up cherry pie filling today. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader, and I am going to be using up some cherry pie filling. Not everyone likes pie, and once you have a bunch of pie filling in your pantry, what do you do with it? So, I find pie fillings are a great way to preserve fruit, as well as other techniques. And I have, I try to not keep a ton of cherry pie filling, or any pie filling, in my pantry if I can. I try to find other ways to save the fruit as well. But I do have some cherry pie filling. So I need to melt a stick and a half of butter. That is a cup and a, that's three quarters of a cup of butter. I used the papers, as you can see, to grease my pan. I'm just going to set the pan off to the side now and get the butter melting. Now this is a new recipe to me, so I am giving it a try, so hopefully it turns out because it would be nice to have other ways of using pie filling. So I need to create a crust and topping and those are going to be the same thing. It's going to be kind of like a shortbread crust and topping. So I will need three cups of flour. I'm not sure that packing or sifting or whatever the flour will make any difference in this, but your mileage may vary. I normally do the uh, scoop and swoop method. I hope that was three cups. And then I need one cup of sugar. This is a quarter cup measuring cup. And half a teaspoon of salt. So in case you were wondering, that was unsalted butter. Wow, everything beeped at once. In case you were wondering, that was unsalted butter. So it will require salt. If you're using salted butter, you could probably probably get away with less salt, honestly, or skip it all together. Generally, I like to use salted butter for things like this because then you don't have to worry about the flakes of salt not dissolving properly and hitting a salty spot, but following the recipe for the most part. And I had some unsalted butter that needed to get used up, so... Okay, mix everything together, and then we will get the butter in here. Okay, my butter is melted. That took way longer than it needed to. I recommend not working from frozen. It also exploded in my microwave, even though I was using defrost. Which I thought would be a better setting, but apparently it doesn't matter. Butter likes to explode. So, get this all mixed in. We're looking for something shortbread-ish and crumbly, I think. Now, you could probably use a mixer for this. I did pull out my hand mixer for the next step, but I just decided to do this part by hand. Okay, well it seems to be holding together, so we will go with it. So we will press half of this in the bottom, and then I will save the other half for the topping. I will probably put it in my measuring cup because I plan on using the same bowl for the next step. And my measuring cup's already dirty. Okay all the butter off. So it does call for a 9 by 13 pan, which this is not. Uh, I think this is actually closer to, I think it's a, an 11 by 9 or something. 10 by 7? I don't know. It's uh, bigger than a 9 by 9, but it's smaller than a 9 by 13. I just thought this might be a better size. And we will see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so it is very dry, so hopefully this will come together, but it is supposed to be a short, shortbread type crust. So, let's get this out of the way. Get this in my measuring cup. Might be easier by hand. Okay, the next step is to make a cream cheese type filling. This is actually one of the reasons why I'm doing this today. This cream cheese ended up in the back of the fridge, and, well, it should probably just get used up. Alright, so I need to beat together all of the ingredients. This has been sitting out for a little bit to help it come up to room temperature. That is supposed to help it break apart while mixing, but I guess I guess we'll see. This just does not want to open. There we go. Okay, 8 ounces of cream cheese. I will link the recipe below so you can follow along with this. Okay, we'll need one egg. It said to just mix everything together. I thought you normally soften the cream cheese first, but well, we're mostly following the recipe, so let's give it a try. Okay, I will need one cup of sugar and some vanilla extract. I am going to actually mix the vanilla extract with a little bit of... That was an eggshell, wasn't it? 
with a little bit of almond extract just because I think it will improve the flavor. So that is one of the changes I'm making. The other change was to change the size of the pan, which will in turn change the amount of time in the oven. So we will see how that goes. Okay, so it calls for, oh, I believe it was one teaspoon, let me double check. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Okay, so I'm going to put one teaspoon of vanilla and one teaspoon of almond. Make sure that's actually almond. And a little vanilla. I think they will go well together. Alright, and then it's just a matter of mixing this until smooth and pouring it on the crust. I will not subject you to the noise of this. I just like the noise of this. So we will just skip ahead for this part. I do like to break it up just a little bit because, you know, when you first start mixing, it's just going to go everywhere anyway. So I'll try to mitigate that a little bit. Okay. Okay, I think we are really close, so I'm just going to check that for lumps. After I, that's probably fine. All right, well, that looks pretty good. Let's get this spread. And then we can put the cherry pie filling and the topping on. And it's just a matter of baking it. So it's a pretty easy recipe, pretty minimal ingredients in my opinion. I just, I hope it tastes good. I mean, I chose it because I felt it would taste good, so, you know. But we will see. And I do feel like this is a pretty versatile recipe. You could probably use almost any kind of pie filling that you think would work well with a cream cheese base. So if you were to use, like, apples, for instance, apple pie filling, you could just stick with the vanilla, obviously, but you could probably put caramel in this. Okay, so... Get that snugged up to the sides. Okay, so another reason why I wanted to use a slightly smaller pan is it calls for one 21 ounce can of pie filling. Well, I don't know about you, but I either do quarts or pints. I never thought to do a different size. I thought quarts or pints. Well, if I like this recipe, I might be doing the pint and a half size after this because I think pint and a half would probably be a good size for this. So I am going to open one jar of pie filling and see where I'm at. And if I don't quite get enough coverage, I will just open the other one and use part of it for baked oatmeal. Let me get a spoon for that. Okay, I'm going to mix. Let's see how much coverage we get with a pint. Now this is a sour cherry pie filling, but you know, use what you have. We had a lot of sour cherries this year. And maybe need the other one. I don't know, I guess it depends on how much cherry you want. It might, might work. Okay, well, I might just go with that. I might redistribute a couple of these cherries to make sure I've got a bit better coverage. But that, uh, that might actually work. I think that'll work for me. Especially since there is plenty of sauce for coverage. Boy, something about that uh, spoon and jar combo, they don't like each other. I'm going to call that good. So I guess I can uh, make this recipe again with another pie filling. Okay, on to the topping. So, so this calls for 55 minutes in the oven. So we will see. This probably could have had less on the topping. Uh, you know, I might not put all of this on. Okay, if you're going to use a smaller dish, you might want to put more in the bottom and have less for the top. Okay, I could probably add uh, a two-thirds to the bottom and a third to the top. Because that looks that looks like plenty. What do you think? If you think it should have had more, let me know below. And I will stand corrected. Okay, there we go. So, in the oven it goes. I will show you how this turns out and uh, cut up a slice and we'll taste it and see how it does. Given the size of my pan, this did require 25 extra minutes in the oven, but it is nice and set. Golden brown. It's a light brown. And this turned out beautifully. Uh, it tastes familiar and I can't place it and I think it's the almond extract. It's just reminding me of some Christmas thing I used to eat, but this is really good. I am going to have to try this with other flavors, other pie fillings. So stay tuned. I might try this again with something else, or I might just look for another 
I think I've got another recipe in my to-do file that uses like apple pie filling or something. So I'll have to give that one a try as well. This one turned out really good. I highly recommend it. If you do to give it a try, let me know below what you thought of it. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll have some more recipes up at the end that you might enjoy watching, and I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.